told some co-workers that I told like my neighbors about it that you can get for free and they like they didn't really believe me and then when I, we came back they asked how did you get in through the border and like we got the test for free my lumpias it's Vanessa and welcome back to the channel this video it came up because a lot of friends and family have been asking me about this travel hack and I thought it would be very very informative for all of you guys before we get started I just want to remind you to make sure to hit that subscribe button down below it seems like a small thing for you guys but it makes a huge difference to me so if you can do that that'd be awesome so the travel hack that we're going to get into today is the COVID-19 PCR test. If you don't know, Mitch and I did a road trip to the States over the holidays and a lot of my family and my friends were asking, wow, are you guys sure about paying big bucks for a PCR test? We're like, sure, whatever, it's fine. But I did a lot of research. And there's a way that you can get a test for free. And yes, it's a legal way to do it, guys. Don't worry. It's nothing, like, bad. <laughs> there are actually other videos on it, but there were questions that weren't answered that I want to make sure the whole picture is very clear to all of you guys. And yeah, I hope you really enjoy it. And I hope it helps you guys in terms of travel. And I hope it saves you money because it saved me and Mitch 300 US, basically. So I'm going to first go into the types of tests that you can do to enter Canada. Mind you, obviously things change over time, so just double check the Government of Canada website in terms of requirements to enter because it may have changed since the date this video has been uploaded. The two types of tests that you can take to enter Canada are the PCR and the NAATS. I call it NATS. So the NATS test and the PCR test. And when you're searching for um, booking an appointment, we did Walgreens. There's three types. There's one that's a rapid test. Do not do that one. A rapid test does not comply with the requirements to enter into Canada. So either do the PCR test or the ID now test, which is the equivalent to a NATS test. I would call whatever pharmacy that you're going to book an appointment with just to double check that it's a NATS test. We didn't do that test, we did the PCR because PCR is like internationally the same name so that's what we stuck with because we didn't want to get stuck anywhere but after doing our test it was really bugging me of what is an ID now test and when I googled it people said it's the same as a NATS test. Hopefully that gives you some insight on that. So I'm asking Vanessa, how do you get a PCR test? This is my experience when traveling to the States. So I don't know about across the world how it would work, but this video will help in terms of if you're traveling to the US. You can get a free PCR test from either a Walgreens, a CVS, or some other type of pharmacy. We actually got it at Walgreens and we got it for free. So, you're wondering, how, do you, how did you do that? Like, what did you do? So I'm gonna just do my experience from Walgreens. How it works for Walgreens is there's a section on the website where it's like, go do a COVID-19 test. And it's funny, in the States, Walgreens is like a shopper's drug mart equivalent. So Walgreens is everywhere in the States. You book an appointment to do your test and they have drive-through pharmacies. I think it's so cute. So if you're not driving, you need to like either take a tab or something. There's also on the website, if you don't, don't drive to call the pharmacy for like additional instructions. So you book a time, you book the location, it asks for some information, it will ask for an address and it will ask for a US address. You just put in your hotel address and then it will ask about insurance. Mind you, we do have travel insurance. We did not do that. So you actually put, I do not have insurance. You select your driver's license instead, like a state ID card and you actually put in your driver's license. So we have an Ontario driver's license. We entered in the numbers. It did ask for state. I put NA at first because that was an option and that didn't work. So I actually just put the state I was in. It ended up going through fine. 
The state ID is just something to indicate who you are. Enter that, book the appointment, and you have to book an appointment for each person. I'm going to explain now the procedure that we went through in order to take the test. We showed up for our appointment, it was a drive through they gave you the test and it was your own, like, it's like kind of like an at-home test where you like stick the thing up your nose, but you don't stick it all the way. It's just one inch into your nose, so the pharmacist watches you do it. We did our swabs, we gave it back to her, and then she had a FedEx box prepared and she would send it off. So we did our appointment in the morning and she let us know that at 3 o'clock, 3.30, FedEx comes, picks up the package, and from that time is when the 72 hour mark starts. So it would be some 24 to 72 hours till we got our test result. And yeah, no, it was very simple. We didn't have to pay anything. We got a confirmation receipt from the pharmacist saying that we got our test done. And yeah, we would get an email once we get our result. And obviously it was negative. That's the overall procedure. Some tips on booking an appointment that I have. Like how easy is it to book an appointment? You have to do it in advance, as much in advance as you can, especially if you are flying. Book something 72 hours before your flight. That way you have your appointment booked and that way you can get your test done. Another question that you might ask is like, should I do the NATS test or the PCR test? If the option is there at the pharmacy, I would highly suggest the NATS test. The thing with the PCR is that it, there could be delays. For example, with Mitch and I, it was around the 72 hour mark that we got our results. And that was simply because there was a huge snowstorm in the US. So our samples were not even at the lab yet for 48 hours. It was crazy. There was like a lot of delay. Another question that you're probably wondering is when we did our appointment, they let us know that we might have to show email confirmation as well as our ID. And you're probably wondering, Vanessa, I have an Ontario ID. What if they look at it and go like, oh, blah, blah, blah. They didn't ask Mitch and I at all for it. But if they do, you just show it to them and you can get your test done. This ID is just to identify you and that's it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Another question you're probably wondering is what do they ask when you come up to do your test? At the pharmacy, we drove up, they asked for our name, what time was our appointment at, and then they asked us to confirm the address. So a tip that I have is just make sure you know the hotel address that you're staying at that you inputted for the appointment. That's all they ask for is the address that you're staying at. They might ask for your ID and you just show it to them. That's it. Another thing in terms of booking your appointment, if you are in a really high populated area, like I don't know, I'm thinking of like New York, you might have some trouble finding appointments because they get booked up quickly. So you may have to venture out of the city to get your test done. But getting a test is better than getting no test at all because you need a test in order to enter. Another question that you're probably wondering is, Vanessa, what if I have a pending test result? Can I go on my flight home or cross the border? No, you cannot. If you have a pending test, and honestly, I was like Googling this because I was so worried that we wouldn't get our result. I'm like, what if it's pending? Because it shows, well, for Canada, if you're either negative or positive, you can enter but it didn't show pending. So when we crossed, we asked, if you have a pending test, you cannot enter Canada. You need either a positive or negative test result. That's why I highly encourage, if you can get the NATS test, get the NATS, because it's less than 24 hours result. So that's always the best. And the good thing too that I liked about the test that we got is that it shows what labs that you had, and you can actually call the lab and ask for the status of your specimen. So another tip that I have is if you get the test done at a pharmacy, ask the pharmacist where's the reference number for the specimen because that's what the lab will ask you for when you call if you're trying to get the status of your result. Because actually when I got my Walgreens one, I didn't ask any of that because I didn't know. So when I was calling the lab, they're like, what's the number? And I'm like, uh, and there was like 10 different numbers on this piece of paper, but we, uh, we got the result anyway, <laughs> but I would highly 
recommend that you go to the pharmacist and ask them where it is on the piece of paper because every pharmacy is a little bit different. If you have any questions about the process, the procedure, anything at all, ask them down below and I will gladly answer them as best as I can. If it's about like requirements for re-entry, I highly recommend that you call or check your government website because they should have the most up-to-date information. But yeah, I really hope this video is informative and I really hope it saves you guys the $150 US to get a test done because you need to have to keep that money for yourself to spend on your vacation, on your trip, or even just save it in general. So I really hope this video helps you. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like and don't forget to click that subscribe button down below as I post every single Friday. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Bye.